Ivan, please make sure that you write legibly on your envelope so those that do the accounting may be able to read it. Also, um, as you give, um, please give liberally, amen, as we are embarking on so many different things here at World Conference Church. We need all of those that have a heart to give to do just that. After you do give, then we're going to ask for you to turn your attention to the screen when that time comes, and we will say what we have a, is a confession of faith over the action that you did in your giving. Amen. All right. As you all are filling out your envelope, we're going to ask Doug and Mike to play us a little something nice. And then as you finish filling out your envelope, you are free to come forward and give the gift that God has blessed you to give.
on children. I believe children uh, of all ages. Two to five. Oh. Two to five. Three to nine. I'm sorry, I don't really do this much, but all the children are excused. The children's church. So we had all of this planned out this morning, who was going to do who was going to do what. So I was really supposed to be welcome um, because I memorized my part where I was going to say everything. I had it all just figured out. And I was like, I'm not speaking um, to introduce my dad when I get up because I don't have anything to say. <laughs> um, but when, during praise and worship, um, I hear a voice, but something came upon me. It was like, you don't do the welcome. Monet does the welcome. You speak for your father. Um, and I didn't know what that was, but I was like, okay. So I told Monet, um, and I guess like I try to think of what my mom says, and I'm like, oh, I can't be here today, so whatever. Um, <laughs> so I started thinking, and I started thinking, well, why do I love my father? Why, why do I appreciate him? And I didn't realize that until I left for college. Um, how much she really, really meant to me. Because every time I would see a guy, they would try to approach me, or the way they talked to me, whatever it was, it was like, oh, you don't do that like my dad, Joe. You know, or, you know, just basically, they not exactly like my dad, but similar to him. It was like, I don't even want to fool with you on those levels. Um, and then I found myself calling him more than I thought I would. I was like, when I'm gone, I don't want to talk to my parents. I'm free, I'm out the house, bye. But then I'm out there, I'm calling him, asking for advice, telling him everything that I do. And I don't even do that out here. I tell him everything I'm doing. And I was like, why am I, like, why are you doing this? And so I was talking to my friends once, and um, I started like comparing my dad to guys. And so they were like, why do you really admire your dad? And I was like, I guess I do. I guess I do. <laughs> um, so coming back out here, I mean, it's been, a struggle. I'm ready to go back, but I mean, I know when I get back out there, I'm gonna miss you. And I just want to say that I really, I really, really, really do love you, and I thank God that He blessed me with a dad like you. And I know when you get on me, it's because you love me and you want the best for me. We're not the best of friends, you know. I understand that you are my father, and I thank, thank you for that and for being there for me whenever I need you. You drop everything just to talk to me to be there for me, and I thank you, and I really appreciate you. So, with all of that said, I would like you all to stand. Welcome my father, your pastor, Pastor Derek. God for the barren kids. As they get older, they try to act like that they don't know what to say anymore. They grew up in church, amen. We had them prim and proper. Now they're trying to get all cool and <laughs> letting all the kids go. Some of the kids, we don't know what's going on. Amen. So we pray for them that they get that thing together. But I'm sure that their mom would be proud of them. And we just thank God for the barren children. Can you thank God for them? Yeah. <laughs> Who's missing? And Mayana in their absence. Amen. That's where they are here in Atlanta, along with First Lady. So I don't know if we're online right now. Um, are we online right now? We are. So First Lady, if you're watching, um, here's your shout out. <laughs> Can y'all say you miss First Lady? Give her this one. still was late to church even without her. Amen. So, I, you know I always blame you for being late before you take your seat. If you are watching online, of course we have people watching from all over the world. We want to thank you for tuning in on today. We believe that there will be a word today that's going to impact your life. And so
So I want you to take out a piece of paper and pen or your iPhone or iPad and take some notes because I believe that when the word is spoken, that God is speaking to you. When God speaks to you, whatever jumps out in you, I want you to pay attention to that thing. And when that happens, I don't want you just to be a hearer of, which, of the word, but I want to infuse some action into your life. When you do that, that produces believers. And so I pray that today, that something happens on the inside of you that you become a believer on today. Believer of what? A believer that God is real and that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Oh, did you call me a sinner? Yes. Yes, you are. All of us are. Amen. But the Bible says all of us have fallen short of the glory. All of us have sinned. And if you can admit that, then you're on your way to understanding that you can't stop sinning on your own. That you need a God that is perfect to handle the things that you have done that is not so perfect. And so today, if you can just um, hold on there and, and, and hear this word, it is our prayer in this place that you hear a word that might change your life for the better. Be it you in Africa, in India, those of you in Asia, and all the way back here to the Americas. We pray that this word does something in your heart and in your life that makes a change that will last for the rest of your life. We want you to know that we love you from World Congress Church. If you'd like to stay connected, just go on the web page and just click through and find out how you can connect more with us and all the things that we're doing here. But in the meantime, stay tuned and all those that are here, and you can just go and welcome our internet audience. Keep all of you here. serious step towards righteousness. And guess what? God loves you. But at least you're trying to go in a positive direction. The bottom line what I'm trying to get out of today is simply this. I'm trying to get you to understand that God does love you. And if you could really understand that he loves you, listen to me, then it changes your behavior. Because some of us have some, let's just keep it real, bad behavior. Amen. We have church behavior, and then we have home behavior. And half of the home behavior is bad behavior. We have home behavior and we have work behavior. And three-fourths of that work behavior is bad. If you're still in post it from, from your job, that's some bad behavior. <laughs> Somebody bought that for the workplace, not for your home office. Amen. <laughs> and what's so amazing about it is that your boss may not love you, but God still does love you. Nothing you can do can stop the love of God in your life. Thank God. God loves you. And so this is what we're trying to get across today. Now, uh, if I don't know, depending if you're a visitor, if you're first time, I'd like to admonish you to come back and look, um, look it up online. But you definitely want to hear all of these messages. I can't preach the whole thing today. So we're just going to go and just kind of take a crowbar and put it on the, 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 the corners of your heart and try to lift that thing up and try to pour some of this good stuff in there. Can we do that? Amen. Let's get into this thing. Get into it. So God loves you. So what are we going to look at? We're going to look at where is God's love? We're going to look at when does God love me? We're going to look at 
why does he love me? And we're going to look at how can God love me? Is anybody in the house like that? I just, Amen. I added that one in there. Because how can God love me? Does anybody have that answer? Amen. Like, yeah. I've done so much in my life. How can God love me? I guess, okay, y'all the other one. So now you have another group of people that think God loves them and they can just do whatever they want to do. Yes, he does. But isn't that a shame? That God loves you and you're just doing whatever you want to do, not doing what he requested for you to do. It's much like you being a parent. Any of you are parents in here? Yes. If you're a parent and you love your child, but that child is rebellious. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you one thing. It's, it's, you, can, you can love your child and not like them. Yes. <laughs> I know some of y'all probably need to hear that. It's like, can you do that? Yes, you can. I love you, but right now, I don't like you right, right now. So how can God love me after all the stuff that I've done? Let's look at all this. All right. So where is God's love for me? Where is God's love for me? In Ephesians 3, 16 through 17, in the new translation, it says this. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with his inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Here it is. Where is God's love for me? God's love is deep at the center of your heart. God's love is deep at the center of your heart. Pastor, I didn't get that. It says in the Bible, it says this in verse 17. It says, it, it went out. It went out. Don't worry. Don't worry. We've been through this before. It says this. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts. Who will Christ make his home? In your hearts. All right. And so he will make his home, watch this, in your hearts. This is what he'll do as you trust and believe him. He'll make his home in your hearts. Watch this. But here's, here's the good part here. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. So what are your roots growing down into? So this says that God's love is in your heart already, and through your actions on showing love to God, your roots will grow down to where he is, which is in the center of your heart. Yes, yes. Have you ever loved somebody from the bottom of your heart? Yes. Well, at the end of the day, that's where God is. God is at the bottom. He's at the center. He's right there in the midst of your heart. God showed me something, and I did. I was been so busy. I need my wife. And I couldn't give my example, but just follow along with me, because I like sometimes to have visions. God showed me like this. I was going to have me a big cylinder, and I was going to put like a flashlight or something at the bottom of the cylinder. And then I was going to put me some rocks. Can y'all see that? Yes. Uh -huh. In that cylinder. And then what I was going to do, as we have the light, the thing is, is simply this. Some of us, that God is in there, and the light is in there because you can see it. But the problem is we can't get to it because of all of those rocks. Yeah, yeah. And what are those rocks? All of those rocks are our hurts, our habits, and all of our hangups that we have on us. And so it's like we can't seem to get, is anybody paying attention? Yes. 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 We can't seem to get to that love that God has for us because of all those rocks. Mm. And so, of course, for just for camera's sake, amen, I was going to start pulling one rock out of it. I mean, it would have been good. Can you see that? <laughs> I was going to pull, and it's almost like a close, but I was like, no, nah, I ain't going to close on the day. But I was going to pull one rock out at a time, because as we keep pulling each yes. rock, yes. what do you get to? Yes. You start getting down into the bottom, into the yes. center of where God's love is. Can y'all see that? Yes. Yes. And so now, have we proven that? Where is God's love for me? Because sometimes it can feel like, uh, where's God's love? I don't feel like he's loving me. Where's God's love? God, God doesn't look like he's loving me. Anybody ever feel that way? Yes. Yeah. Where is it? It's at the center of your heart. And let me tell you, it's behind all of those hurts you have. And if you can start dealing with all of those hurts, all of those habits, and all of those things you have, then you can experience that light that I'm talking about. You can experience God's love in your life, and you can do that today. Amen? Amen. When does God love you? When does God love you? Somebody say that. When does God love me? Yeah, when does he love me? Listen to this in Romans 8, 31 through 39 in the message translation. It says this. So, what do you think? With God on your side like this, 
How can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare, um, dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, and is, is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. What is that saying? Jesus is at the right hand of God right now sticking up for us. Yeah. There is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying, threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. They kill us in the cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick you off one by one. Watch this. None of this faces us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Is that good news sometimes? the question, when does God love me? God loves me all the time. Mm. Nothing can get in the way of God's love for you. Nothing can get in the way of God's love for you. Yeah. God says that there's nothing that you can do to get in the way of his love for you. There's nothing, oh, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. No, you don't know what he did. No, he died for all of your sins. In the past, present, and future, when does God love me? Right now. Even though I'm doing what I'm doing, even though you're doing what you're doing. Amen. Pastor, you don't understand. I'm sitting in church right now, and I can't wait to get up out of here, so I go give me something to eat. And he's, guess what? He still loves you. Amen. Pastor, you don't get Last night, I was at a rave. In fact, you don't even get it. I mean, I was doing some things, but I made it to church. He still loves you. Pastor, you don't get it. I was on the internet looking at Susie and, 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 and Floozy, and, and, and he still loves you. Amen. Pastor, you don't get it. I was cheating on my taxi just yesterday trying to figure out how I'm going to get the IRS to try to get my money back. He still loves you. Pastor, you don't get it. Because my sin, Pastor... My sin, my sin, Pastor, is, is, is a doozy because I've done some things that are so terrible, I can't even speak of them. He still loves you. Amen. When does he love you? He loves you always. The Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of God. You can sit there and, and not even embrace him, but he has already embraced you. Nothing can get in the way of God's love for you. Somebody said that nothing, 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 nothing can get in the way of God's love for you. And that's why I love him. But that's not the point today. The point simply is this. Whether you do or not, he still loves you. Amen. And nothing can stop his love for you. Isn't that good to know? Yes. I believe if more children knew this, that they'd act different. Mm -hmm. Because many people, you know, we always want our parents to love us. But there's somebody in God that loves you no matter if your parents fail to love you. Many times we have issues with our parents because they're not loving us the way we'd like for them to love us. Amen? Amen. I wish you'd hug me more. I wish you took me out to the park more. I wish you'd do this. I wish you'd do that. But then with many times children don't know, our parents didn't do any of that stuff for us. <laughs> they don't know what, what I did for you was way more than what my parents did for me. I mean, my, my kids try to hit me, you didn't do this, you didn't do that I'm like, Shoo. Shoo. Man, even uh, my wife, I'll take my daughter to college. My parents will say, here you go, your money, they go, you pay, go to school. <laughs> Amen. They, they were there and you're like, so you all right? I mean, my mom was crying on the airplane, but I was like, hey, you got to. That's back in the days when you could get on the airplane with the kids. We all understand that. We didn't have all the security measures back then. So my mom was on the plane. My father trying to say, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Today, man, we got it's an expense just to get them there because we got to be there to go to Target. And we didn't have no Target. We had Jimco. 
Jim Coke. Y'all don't remember Jim Coke. So you got your young audience. <laughs> and it wasn't a place you just went to. You went and got what you could get when you could get it. I had a trunk and a suitcase and had to carry that thing the best way I could in the hot sun. <laughs> Shoot, my out there with minivans and suitcases and... If she still didn't have that, God still loves her. God still loves me. Listen to me. Do not allow what your parents did do to hold you hostage any longer. Amen. Amen. Just listen to me. God loves you. If you don't think your parents loved you the way you wanted to, then wait. Wait till you become a parent. And then see, because what we always try to do is that we try to give our kids something that, you know, we didn't give them or, or we didn't get ourselves, <laughs> only to find out that, that your kid's saying the same thing. But let me tell you something. God loves all of his children, Amen. Amen. no matter what situation that you're in. And God is not moved by your complaining about what you didn't do, you know, uh, about, he don't care, like, God ain't doing this for me. That doesn't move God because you mad at him because he didn't go and pay your rent for the month. Mm -hmm. That doesn't move God. God is not worried about you because you mad because he didn't pay your tuition for the month. God is not, no. God is moved only by his word. And God is moved by faith. And no matter what, many times loving you means saying, you know what? I'm not going to step away from you for a minute. Because I love you. Amen. Man. Let me tell you something. God loves you. What does he love me? He loves you all the time. All the time. I don't feel God's love. Come back next week. We'll talk about that. But right now, I want you to know his love at this very moment is on you. And I'm telling you, you'll act different if you think that God loves you. And not only just think, it is a fact. He does love you. How do you know? You get to breathe the air right now that he's supplying you. I believe everybody walking here on their legs. Amen. I don't see anybody on any respirators or anything like that. God loves you. And even if you were on a respirator, God still loves you. God loves you. And what is he going to love you? Forever. What's going, what can stop God's love from nothing? Uh, not your thoughts, not your badness, not your whatever you do. You can take somebody's life and God still loves you. God, then nothing can, 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 can stop God's love for you. Somebody said nothing. Nothing. And stop God's love for me. Oh, y'all don't sound convincing. Excuse us out there in the world. They just a little bit sleepy, but we almost finished with the message. Amen. Come on, can y'all say again? Say nothing. Nothing. Can stop God's love for me. Can stop God's love for me. That's how you should get up every morning. Nothing can stop God's love for me. So if nothing can stop God's love for me, I might as well go for it. Amen. Many of us hold back because we, we don't think that we have a right to move forward. Why not? Somebody got to get blessed. It might as well be me. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop God's love. Why does God love me? Why does God love me? In Genesis 1, 26 through 28, in the message translation, it says this. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them God, created them God-like, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. Watch this. Prosper, produce, fill the earth, take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every little thing, living thing that moves on the face of the earth. I love that. If we just say and just forget the, for the fish, be responsible. Amen. My God. Can I talk to my children for a minute? Y'all can just listen in. Can I talk to them for a minute? Y'all yeah. just hold on for a second. Y'all look at me. Be responsible. What does that mean? That means that you are able to respond to the situations that come into your life. Yeah. Oh, this is too hard. God would not allow it to be in your life if it was too hard. That means you are able to respond to the things that happen in your life right now. It is not what you're going through. It is not too difficult. You are able to respond to it. Somebody say, be responsible. Be responsible. Yeah. So why does God love me? I mean, how can he love me? God loves me because I am made in his image. He loves you because you are made. Let me ask you this. Why do you love your children? Because they are made in your image. And I know some of you are like, I don't know. 
<laughs> Sometimes I just don't know. Have they ever act like, like you taught them all kinds of, and then they do something like, now where'd you get that from? Yeah. You hanging out with Ray Ray, and if your name is Ray Ray, I ain't talking about you. And you're saying, <laughs> you the good Ray Ray. Rollo, ain't nobody named Rollo these days, right? That's what <laughs> you teach your child something, and they're going to do the opposite of what you taught them. Watch this. God will teach you something, and you'll do the opposite of what God tells you to do. And he still loves you. And why is God upset about that? Because you're made in his image. Listen to me. You got God stuff on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm getting it. All things are possible with you through Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah. You have abilities that you don't even know that you have. Right. Right. Christ, I got God stuff on the inside of me. God loved you so much that he took time out to birth himself in the form of Jesus Christ on the earth. He didn't stop there. Then he went and had himself go to a cross, spat on, and all that other kind of stuff, demeaned publicly. I mean, put up there, people talking about him. And then guess what he did? He forgave them even before he left to go to glory. But then he didn't stop there. Then he sent a Holy Ghost for you to plant on the inside of you. To let you know he gave you his power, his ability, his influence. He left a will and testament for you, amen? And he, I, I wanted some money. See, that's your problem. You, you don't want no money. You want the Holy Spirit. That'll teach you and get you everything you need. The Holy Spirit, what is that? That is the enabler to get you to whatever it is you need. That is God's voice saying, that is God looking down on us as the crow flies and saying, go there. Go there. Don't talk to them. Step back. Move forward. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. God loves me. I'm made in his image. I'm made. God is made. God. Father. He's God Father. Jesus. Son. Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit. We are made three parts also. You see me right now. This is, this is not me, but what you see is my body that I'm moving. On the inside of me and on you too is my soul, my mind, my will my emotions, my intellect, and beneath that is my spirit. It is, it is the actual who I am. When I die, this body goes, but my soul and my spirit, my personality, I'm still going to be here. So you ain't got to cry, because I'm going to be right here, amen? I'm going to be wherever God would have me to be, giving him the glory. My body will be gone, but my soul, my spirit will still be present. Why does God love me? Because I'm made in his image. I have no limitations. My God. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. And listen to me. My limitation right now is my body, actually. Yeah. Uh, let me teach you something. When my body is gone, when my body is gone, I can think a thing and do it. Yeah. Right now, when I think a thing, I got to get my body, I got to get my flesh in conjunction with what I think. Yeah. You ever tell somebody something, so let me think about it. Because they're trying to figure out physically how that's going to get done. When this body leaves, we don't have to do a whole bunch of figuring out and stuff. You can think Paris and a strawberry ice cream, and you'll be sitting up in Paris with some strawberry ice cream. My God. <laughs> you can think whatever, you can think something, and it will be so. But this body holds us down from doing those things. Why does God love me? Because I am made in his image. And God doesn't hate himself. God is not mad at himself. Mm. Let me speak to you. God's not mad at you. God loves you. And he loves you right now. You are made in his image. So stop putting yourself on punishment. Because God loves you. Do you understand me? I said stop putting yourself on punishment. Because God, somebody said God loves me. God loves me. Yeah, yeah. Here's the last one. How can God love me? I don't know about you, but sometimes I come to this place of how can God love a person like me? After all the junk I've done, after all the stuff I didn't put God through, after all the times I promised I was going to do right, after all the broken promises, God, this time you get me out of this. I ain't got nobody like that. Amen. Yeah. Even the young folks should be like, you know, I remember back in the day, you're like, God, if you get me out of this thing, I, I'm going to go to church on Sunday. I'm not going to that. It'd be Saturday night, and I mean, no, seriously, you get me out of this, I will be there. And I was there. If I said that to God, that's what I did for the church. Because it's like, you get me out of this thing on Saturday, 
I ain't playing. I'm going to be there Sunday. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be there for often, but I'm going to go to church to get a word. <laughs> did you ever have one of those things like, woo, I didn't, I didn't got in too deep. I didn't mess around with the wrong folks. They, they circling back. <laughs> I didn't threw the egg at the wrong person today. That's, that's, you get me out of this gun. I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to go the whole month. I, didn't, I ain't going to be lying to God. I'm going to go there, God, and this whole year, you know? This God, it depends on how bad you work, you know what I'm saying? On the promise that you give God. Sometimes you do something so bad, this whole month, I'm going. And I was the kind of dude, I'd go. And when the month was over, I paid you back, God, for what, for what you did for me. So let me know, let me tell you now, that's incorrect thinking. <laughs> because whether I went to church or I didn't, God still loves me. Amen. Hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. Watch this. I go to church because I want to. My God. Yeah. Woo, woo. See, watch this. My wife is away, but she's going to come back home. Hallelujah. Why? Because she wants to. <laughs> Because somebody want to. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't like angry eggs. You know what I'm talking about? So some of y'all got angry eggs. That means your wife cooking them angry. <laughs> I don't want an angry roast. I want you to want to cook the roast. Yeah. See, when you want to do something, you put some carrots and some onions and some garlic. When you just need to, you just dump some water and throw that thing up in there and say, your roast is in the oven. I'll be back later. I don't want it angry. I, I want you to want to. You see, God is the same way. God don't want you coming to church because you're in trouble. God don't want you coming to serve it because something is not going right and things are bad. God wants you to want to. Somebody said, I think I want to. I think I want to. <laughs> I love me when I do the kind of stuff that I do repeatedly. How does he keep forgiving me? Have you ever sinned so much you just said, forget, I ain't even asked for forgiveness this time? Wow. Okay, now, let me get the other, other people who sin different ways. Have you, ever, <laughs> have you ever sinned so much that, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and finish out this sin? <laughs> and then I'll ask him for forgiveness because I can't go because I know what I'm doing is wrong, so let me just go ahead. First of all, thank, thank God that you know there is a God that you need to talk to that way. Is it right? No, it ain't right. But at least you know because you got friends that don't know at all. Who are you talking to? You know, you be with your friends and they just say, we about to do this thing. And they ain't even thinking about the Lord at all. At least you're saying, oh, Lord. I knew it was going to go out, but I didn't know it was going to get down to this. Anybody I don't know, have you ever been into a fight and didn't even know you was going to fight that day? Right before you get into a fight, your heart starts beating. Right before you get into a fight, amen, you start going through all, oh, oh okay, we here, okay. <laughs> Now we're going to throw these things right here. Listen, why do you keep fighting with God? God knew you was going to fight with him when you woke up that morning. You didn't know it was going to be a fight. Why don't, you just, why don't you just drop your dudes and just say, okay. Because he knows exactly what you need. He loves you. And when a person loves you, they want the best for you. So even though you don't like what's going on, God says, this is the best for you right now. Somebody say, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. In 1 John 4, 8 through 9, the New Living Translation, it says this. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. How can God love me? Because he is. Because he is. He is love. How can God love me? Because he is. <laughs> He don't know anything different but to love. He don't do like your friends are next to you. 
I know that your partner sitting next to you. That's under conditions. I bet you if you slap them right now, they're going to be a little bit of swirling right now. Maybe the first slap, you're like, oh, oh, oh. The second slap, it's going to be a fight in church. And maybe we can get some hits on that. Maybe we can really get church going if we get a fight going on in church. <laughs> You're talking about getting some publicity for the World Congress Church? You got to watch this on YouTube. We got to. Action photo and slap and slap and boy, we got a million hits just on YouTube. <laughs> but if there ain't no fight, it's going to be 40 hits, amen, before 40 people watch. That's a shame. People want to see folks fight more than they want to hear from the gospel. And that's the kind of world that we live in. But it doesn't matter. God still loves us. It goes on in verse 9. It says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. He showed he loved us through that. 1 John 4 and 16. It says this. We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. We have put our trust, and this is what we, as we conclude, um, you need to put your trust in God's love. And I know that's hard for some of you because you're like, you know, my daddy wasn't there to love me. My mama wasn't there to love me. So you're talking about putting my trust in somebody I can't even see. You're crazy I'm doing that. But God said, that's what's called faith. Faith is the substance of things not seen, but the evidence of things. Amen? So listen to me. Listen to me. It's evident that God loves you because you are still here and you have a purpose on the inside. So it's evident that God has something for you. It's evident because you made it into 2014. It's evident because where you are still there's something more that's on the inside of you. God keeps showing his evidence on the inside of you. And so I'm asking you as he's showing his evidence to trust him today that he loves you. And that you walk by his love. And not by thinking that God is punishing you by all the things that's going on in your life. It says this, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. And all who live um, in love, live in love, live in God, and God lives in them. Somebody say God loves me. God loves me. See, the essence of God is love. So he gives what he is. Love. How can God love me after all I've done? Because that's all he can do. That, that's what he is. He, is, that's his essence, love. He, that, that's all he can do, is love. So as we close, the question is, where is God's love? God's love is deep at the center of your heart. When does God love me? God loves me all. all the time. Thank you, God. Why? Does he love me? God loves me because I am made in his image. Amen. How can God love me? The essence of God is love, so he gives what he is. Amen. Which is love. Amen. It is my prayer as I conclude that you come to a place to walk out of here and they ask you, what that man preach about? That God loves me. Amen. And then this is what I want you to say. And he loves you too. Amen. What you talking about? What you, what you, what you, what you, that's what I want to say. What? Oh, you give them Bible thumbs. No, I'm just here to tell you God loves you. God loves you. That's all I'm here to tell you today. That God loves you. Oh, but you don't know the sin I'm in. That has nothing to do with it. We just read that. God still loves you. Amen. Oh, I don't even believe in God, but He believes in you. Amen. He believes in you. And because He believes in you, and He's giving you air conditioning, giving you sun thing today, He's giving you the wind, He's giving you all these wonderful things. Oh, but he ain't paid my rent. If God was there, then he would have let my mama live when I prayed to him. So then where do you see that in the scripture? Where do you see that as a promise of God that he would do that? If he loved me, then I wouldn't have got a divorce. But where do you see that in the scripture? Where do you see that? If he loved me, then how can I be going through all this stuff I'm going through? Where do you see that in the scripture? The Bible says this, you sow seed, and the seed that you sow is the seed that you will reap. You will receive by your faith according to your faith. So whatever it is that you want in your life, it's up to you. It's up to you. And today I call it on you right now to know one singular thing 
to know that God loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen? Amen. Could you please stand to your feet? Amen. Somebody say, God loves me. God loves me. So if you are out there and you're still struggling, trying to believe that God loves you, I want you to know right now that without question that he does. Here we believe in teaching the word of God so people can go home and look at it for themselves. So I'm asking you right now, right where you, right where you are, if you're out there, in whatever country you may be in, I want you just to say right now that God loves me. Say that. You may hear that God loves me. God, God, God loves me. God loves me. I want you to embrace that for this week. And I want you to come back next week as we go deeper into this. As we deal with more of the, the humanistic side of what it means by God loving us. And how we deal with some of our failures. How we work through this whole thing of what it looks like God doesn't love us. We're going to be dealing with all those things. So we're not just taking something and sweeping it under the rug. We deal with things here. So I invite you to come back so we can get deeper into this and so we can deal with this about how God loves us. Because I want to talk deeper about how he does love us. But right now, this is what I want you to do right where you are. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'd like to invite you now to have a relationship with him. It's very simple. In the book of Romans, it says this. It says simply this. If you believe in your heart and you confess out of your mouth, if you can do that, if you can speak it out of your mouth, and you can believe in your heart, what? That Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He is Lord, and He, and he is raised up. He died and He was raised up for your sins. If you can believe that, you too can be saved. Let me explain something to you. Nobody ever went to hell because they sinned. People only go to hell because they, they didn't believe in the one that was sent, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. They go to hell because they believe um, they rejected the one who gave them life, which is Jesus. What are you going to do today? Are you going to reject? Or are you going to come and say, you know what, today I'm going to receive. And so I'd like right now for you to really think about that. As you're thinking about that. There's three calls I want to, to put out there. The first one I just did is that if you like to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The second one is, is that if you like to, you know Jesus, and, and he is in your heart, and you believe that, but you need restoration in your heart, and you want to get back to God. And the third, if you need a church home, even if you're out there, you live far away from us, you can still connect to World Conference Church. Just go online and find out a way that you can connect. We want to put that invitation to you right now. So the first, first is this. Pastor, I don't know if I have a relationship with, with Jesus Christ. We're not first trying to get you to be part of a church. We're trying to get you part of the body of Christ. This is all that you have to do. Just repeat after me right where you are as you're looking at me right now. Just repeat after me. And all those even in the building, if you'd like to repeat after me. You simply say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I open up my mouth. I open up my mouth. And I confess from my heart. I confess from my heart. That you. That you are my Lord. And you. And you are my savior. Are my savior. I need you. I need you. I cannot do this on my own. I cannot do this on my own. So I ask you right now to put power on the inside of me, which is your precious spirit. I now give my life to you. If you pray that prayer, then guess what? You are now saved. You may say, I'm fully tingle. Y'all ain't revving up the organ and playing the tambourine because it's not about that. It's not about emotions. It's about what the word of God says. And if you made that confession from your heart, you are now saved. If you've done so, please write in to us and let us know that you did that so we can take you to the next step. The next thing is that you may be out there and maybe you're watching us and you didn't go to church today. This is your church for the day. But you need to do something different in your relationship with God. Maybe you've been in church and somebody hurt you in church. But we want to talk to you right now. You need to find a local body of believers that you can be a part of. And don't allow, because the pastor did something crazy or somebody did something crazy in church, to chase you away from God's teachings. You need to go back to church one way or the other. 
So now, if you're out there and you want to renew your relationship with Christ, you know that he is real, but you're, you've been hurt and you need to renew your relationship. Repeat after me and those of you here can do the same. Say, Father, Father I have been hurt, I have been hurt and, I need to be cleansed. and I need to be cleansed. Come into my heart again. Be strong in my heart again. Help me deal with this pain. Help me deal with this hurt. That I may once again worship you with freedom and in truth. It's as simple as that. You can go back, because this is recorded, and you can go over it again if you like to even pray. But it's as simple as that, just asking God. And I believe right now that God will speak to your heart and say a simple yes. You should hear it in your heart. If like in the examples, there are too many rocks in there, start dealing with some of your hurts, habits, and hangouts so you can get down to the center of where God is in your heart. Here's the last of you. If you'd like to become a part of this particular church, if you're out there and you have more church home, you can partner with us if you'd like to. If you are born to another church and you haven't been there for a while, go back to your church. Go and be a blessing to your congregation. But if you have no place and you believe this is your place, even if you are a member of this church and you're just watching us from afar, I'd like for you right now, if you'd like to, you can go on the webpage and you can join the church even online. Who would ever think you can join church online? If you're in the building right now, right now in the building, and you'd like to join this church, I invite you to come to me right now if you believe that this is your house. If you believe that this is a place that can provide cover for you. As they start to play, we, we call you right now if you'd like to come. The elders will come and join you. Right there, right now, where you are, you're sitting out there, we want to say as we get ready to go off the air, again, if you'd like to become part of this body, please just go in and sign in. And then we'll get right to you as soon as we're able to. God bless you, and we love you. Anybody, anybody, if you have, if you are void of a church home and will like a church home, you will welcome.